Over the next few videos in this section, we're going to introduce the various different octane material types that are available for octane for Cinema 4D. In this video, I'm using the SpacePilot.C4DC, but we're just going to take a quick look at how you can access the materials before we get into each one in the following videos. So I have a live viewer open right here. If I go to the octane menu, you can see this is the octane live viewer window and you can open it up and then start a render by clicking on the octane icon right here. If I open up the octane dialog, you can see that this menu is very similar to the one that's available in the live viewer. You can also access the settings. We're mostly interested in the materials. So let's close this and let's go to materials node editor. So this is the octane specific node editor. It's a great way to examine the materials that are in the scene, as well as create nodes and connect them to your materials. Of course, the materials that are in your scene are available down here. I have probably a few too many. So it's probably a good idea to go into function and remove unused materials. That narrows it down to the ones that are actually in the scene. So if I go to the Octane Node Editor, I can take a look at a material. For example, this mixed material right here, I'll click on it and it appears graphed in the node editor. So you can see all the various different nodes and this is a mixed material. So it's blending two different materials together. And you can see all the various textures that are applied to it as well as the Octane materials. And if I select one of these materials, its settings are available over here in this panel. So if I want to create a new Octane material, I'm going to click right here and drag it into the graph. And you can see here is my Octane material. If I go into the basic settings for this material, I can set the material type. So these are the standard materials that are available for Octane for uh, Cinema 4D. We have Diffuse, which is good for rough surfaces that don't have a strong specular highlight. So think of things like, you know, a sheet of paper or concrete. Uh, we have glossy materials, which is good for opaque plastics. Any non-metallic material that has a strong specular highlight. We have a specular material, which is good for transparent surfaces like transparent plastic or glass or liquids. Also good for creating subsurface scattering uh, materials like skin and wax and jade and that kind of thing. And then we have the metallic material, which of course, as the name implies, is very good for metallic surfaces. And then, of course, we have Tune, which is good for non-photorealistic Tune shading, something that creates a very il illustrative effect. And all of these are explored in detail in the movies in this section. We also have a mixed material, which allows you to combine two different materials together with using an amount that determines how much strength each material has on the surface. This is explored in the movie on mixed materials. We have a blend material, which is very similar, but it allows you to blend three materials together using various different amounts. So it's a bit more sophisticated than the mixed material. And we have a movie dedicated to working to with the blend material and the sub material, which is created specifically to work with the blend material. It's another way of creating octane material, but it's meant to be used with this blend material. In other parts of this course, we'll be getting into the details of working with the different types of textures that are found in the node editor. So we'll get into that in more detail, but we'll also talk about it in this section, at least working with basic textures. For the most part, you can use the Cinema 4D bitmap texture as part of your materials here, but it's usually a better idea to use the Octane image texture because it has uh, attributes that are specific to uh, octane, such as power and so on, um, and as well as texture type. So usually you'll want to use the octane image texture as opposed to the Cinema 4D bitmap texture. And then we have a number of other octane specific textures. There are some instances in which you can use Cinema 4D textures with octane materials, but for the most part, it's safe to stick to the octane specific textures that you find right here in these various categories. We'll also talk a little bit about working with the octane DB, the live DB or database, as well as the local DB. We have a movie that's dedicated to showing you how you can download materials that have been created by other octane users, 
as well as how you can store your own custom materials to a local database that you can then share between different uh, Cinema 4D scenes. So let's start by taking a look at the diffuse material in the next video in this section.